Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning again to all of you, and welcome to this service. I've received two uh, or three flower messages, so let me share that with you. Dearest Colby, happy eighth birthday, precious boy. You have no idea how much we love you. We thank God for picking us to be your family. God bless you today and always love mom, dad, Connor, Courtney, Callum, and Channing. And then, friends, to all of you, a big thank you to Brackenes Methodist Church. This is from the WA. 60 pairs of shoes were bought for Epworth. You remember that Christmas tree, the Christmas tree fundraiser towards the end of last year. Cash in hand will be used towards groceries and other needs. Christmas goodies and five pairs of shoes to the church community. And cash was given to the parcel care team for groceries. So thank you to all of you. And then from Ernest, they were at the early service, to my dearest Linda, thank you for being my doctor, cook, travel agent, financial advisor, and much, much more. Most of all, my friend, and more important, my wife, happy 54th wedding anniversary for Wednesday, the 15th of March. Love you dearly, Ernest. <clears throat> so those are the flower messages that we have which we have received for this week. Um, just to remind uh, you that if you want to know what's happening in the church, our community news, then please visit our um, Facebook page or our website. Um, you may have also received it through our weekly email. So it's all there, all over the place, uh, all the news stuff that are happening, that will be happening, and so on and so forth. Okay, friends, let us, let us pray. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, who, who loves us deeply, who showers us with grace and mercy, thank you for bringing us together here this morning. Thank you for your love for us, you who forgives, who embrace us with a deep love and care. We are grateful. And so we lift our hearts to you, O God, in worship and praise as we sing our songs, as we listen to your word, as we respond to your word, as we bring to you our offering in everything we do, we bring you our praises and our worship. For you alone are God, worthy to be praised. We have been called to love you with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind, and with all our strength. And then we have been called to love our neighbor as ourselves. These are the greatest of the commandments. And so even as we praise and worship you, Lord, even as we have to bring to you or give to you our praises, the lifting of our hearts and minds, Lord, you who are steadfast in your love and infinite in your mercy, we are reminded that you welcome sinners. You invite sinners, you invite us to be your guests. And so in your presence we confess our sins, trusting in you to forgive us. We have yielded to temptation and sinned. Lord, have mercy. We have turned from our neighbors in their need. Christ, have mercy. We have resisted your word in our hearts. And so, Lord, help us to hear again this morning your words of grace that the almighty and most merciful God grant us pardon, forgiveness of all our sins, time for true repentance and amendment of life, 
and the grace and comfort of God's Holy Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, our reading comes to us from John chapter 4, and it is the well-known passage of Jesus meeting with the woman at the well. Jesus meeting or talking with the Samaritan woman at the well. And I'm going to read from verse 1, from verse 5 to verse 26. So Jesus had to go through Samaria. Um, and he came to a town near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can I get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his son, sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands. And the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the, fire, the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the two worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Just so far in God's word for today, and we thank God for God's word. Amen. Thank you, Lungi. They're a bit noisy next door. We should be like that. But we are not. Friends, the end of this year, I will be relocating to Mohopong. 
Now, some of you may know where that is. If you don't know, Mogopong is the old Nabum Spreit, up north. You take the N1 north, and eventually you'll get there. <laughs> now, the thing about Mogopong is that they have huge water problems. So, this coming week, I'm going to my, my house there, and one of the things <clears throat> that we need to do is to install a big tank. For the five or six hours a day when we do have water, we can fill the tank. And for the rest of the day when we don't have water, at least, or don't get water, at least we have a tank full of water. <laughs> so we have some water for our use. Um, so it makes you very aware of the importance of water. Water is so important that it's also in in most countries all over the world, a basic human right. In other words, the authorities are compelled to provide you with water or to make water accessible for your use. That's how important water is. Uh, it's a basic human right and it's uh, acknowledged that it is indeed. Um, and there's a responsibility on the side of the authorities to, to make sure that you have access to safe, clean water. Um, it is like that all over the world. And then I read this passage in which Jesus offers to the woman water from the well, but apart from that also a different kind of water. Uh, and it seems to me that as though she is thirsty in more than one way. Um, and I think that what Jesus offers her is worship that is real and true. And in that kind of worship, if she can come to that space where she worships like that, her thirst will be quenched. She will not be thirsty again. That's apart from, from drawing water from the well um, or from our tank uh, of water in Mohopong. Drawing from the water that Jesus gives. And in that passage, we see Jesus speaks about worshipping in the spirit. And for me, certainly, there's a sense in which worship is to be done in the spirit that is in Christ. That's the worship that he speaks about. To worship God with the same spirit that is in Jesus. Now, I'm very aware that today we live in a world in which people, especially those outside the church, are looking at the church and asking the church to do less worship and be more active in the world. I, I sometimes get that sense. Important as worship is, like we worship here on a Sunday morning, Somehow, when we worship in the Spirit or with the Spirit that is in Jesus, worship is much more than just this. This is only part of our worship. Worship happens also when we leave here. That's the kind of worship a thirsty world is asking for. The world is thirsty. <laughs> People are thirsty for what is important, for life. And so often, I think we can get so caught up in our worship on a Sunday morning that we forget that this is just the beginning of our worship. That worship is more than just this meeting we have here with God. God meeting us here. 
if we worship with the same spirit that is in Jesus, then surely worship is more than just this. Important as this is. I think so often the church is very good at separating what we do here on a Sunday morning from the rest of our lives. I don't know if you've noticed that. I have discovered that to be true for my own life. It is true. We are very good at separating what we do here on a Sunday morning from what we do when we leave here after we've left here. But to worship in the same spirit, with the same spirit that is in Jesus, there's no separation between the two. When you look at Jesus' life, you don't see that separation. The one kind of flows into the other, flows into the other, flows into the other. Worship in spirit, and in truth. I think to worship in spirit is to make God relevant for people in their situations. To make God somehow connected to where they are. You know, it's sometimes a struggle to connect or to, to let God connect with us where we are. God meets us where we are. God is relevant to our lives. But if, if we see worship as only something we do on a Sunday morning, then God becomes irrelevant to the world outside the church. And it's no wonder they look at us and shout at us and say, just get out. Come here where we are so we too can meet God where we are. So God can meet with us where we are. It's nice to know God meets with you where you are. But we are also thirsty. But we don't know. We don't know how to, to let God meet with us where we are. You who are God's people, come and bring God to, to where we are. You see, isn't that what Jesus did? Bringing God to where the people were. God became relevant, important, part of their lives. Worship in spirit and truth is to make God relevant for this world. As God is relevant for you, for your life. But when you speak about your life, that's not where it ends. It does, God doesn't end with you and your life. And so I want to, to read to you something. And I want you to imagine you being at the well. And somehow Jesus meeting with you. You who are at the well with your thirst. With your thirst. Thirsting looking for water. Um, in a dry place. And so you meeting at the well. Jesus meeting with you. And then you imagine others too who are there with you at the well. Because that passage invites us to come to where that woman is. For we too are like her. 
as much as we want to separate ourselves from her. So I'm going to read this to you and invite you to simply be there. Around the well of your grace, O God, are those who thirst for friendship and love. Help us to offer them the living water of community and connectedness. Around the well of your life, O God, are those who thirst for joy and safety. Help us to offer them the living water of playfulness and protection. Around the well of your mercy, O God, are those who thirst for wholeness and peace. Help us to offer them the living water of comfort, healing, and welcome. Around the well of your presence, O God, are those who thirst for meaning and connection. Help us to offer them the living water of service and worship. May the life we have found in you be the gift we share with all who hunger and thirst, with all who are outcast and rejected, with all who have too little or too much, with all who are wounded or ashamed. And through us, may this corner of the world overflow with your living water. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you for the water that you offer to us. Help us to drink deeply from that water so that we may never thirst again. For you have met with us, with each one of us, and we thank you for that. Help us now to go out and to share what you have given to us so that the world who is so thirsty out there may also drink from the same water and never be thirsty again. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, good. We've come to that place where we share the community news, um, all the stuff that's happening here at the church. Um, and all of this, of course, is in response to what God is doing for us. Isn't that what it's about? Yes, of course. Good. Okay, so first, there's quite a bit I see here. Um, but also I want to encourage you to read our Facebook page, our website, the weekly email, and so on and so forth, so that you, in your own time, can read about the community news, what's happening, the contact numbers are all there, and so on and so forth. The first one, pastoral care, 40 days, each day you put an item that you don't want in the black bag, and at the end of the 40 days you bring the bag here to church uh, with all that stuff. And that is towards our pastoral care ministries. And then to remind you of the WA meeting on Saturday, the 25th of March, at half past two. You don't have to belong to the WA. Come and help them to make palm crosses for our Palm Sunday, Sunday, palm, palm Sunday service. Uh, so if you want to come and help them, Saturday, the 25th of March, from half past two here at the church, can I just say that our WA went to the district meeting uh, last week or sa yesterday, I think, and they came back with a certificate, certificate of growth. This acknowledges that Brackenhurst Women's Auxiliary achieved the largest numeric and percentage growth in members during 2022. How does that sound? Let's give them a hand. Yes. So well done. You can now put up the certificate somewhere. If you can find the space, you can put it up wherever you want. Good. 
we celebrate with you. And then, friends, uh, just take note that our service, the 9.30 service on the 26th of March, that's not next week, the week after, in two weeks' time, the youth will be leading us, will be leading that service. So just keep that in mind, uh, and let's come and support our youth as they lead us through a wonderful... I remember last year when they did it. Uh, people were so chuffed about the, the way that they led the worship service and the testimonies and all that stuff. And so we're looking forward to our young people leading that service on the 26th of March. I'm sure the music will be great. Am I right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So really looking forward to that. And then, friends, if you have uh, little children or kiddies, uh, please take note, our Holiday Bible Club on the 27th and 28th of March from 8 till 1. Uh, holidays, I know parents don't know what to do with their children. They feel like uh, sending them overseas or something. But you can bring them here to the church. And Natalie will look after them for you for those two mornings. The same with the youth, 29th and 30th of March at the Youth Hall, Youth Holiday Club from 8 till 1. Uh, there are some rules here. I see, please bring your own lunch, but there will be a tuck shop will be open. And then, friends, confirmation for this year starts on the 4th of May at half past 6. From the 4th of May, half past 6, you can call Natalie or let the church office know. Uh, if you're not sure about how old you are, how old you need to be, etc., phone Natalie. Check with her. Don't miss this opportunity. And if you have a friend whose parents do not go to church, they may not go to church at all, but your friend may want to explore what it means belonging to a church or may want to come for the fellowship or uh, uh, looking for a place to belong, then please invite them to come along. Um, our confirmation class is open. Uh, you don't have to be a member here. Uh, we acknowledge that today there's a lot of families where some parts of the family don't even want to know about church, and yet there are other people in the family who would like to go to church. So for young people, we offer them this opportunity. If you know someone like that, or you know your grandkids or your children, your friends, then please invite them to contact Natalie, and we will do all the follow-up work. We'll speak with the parents. We'll make sure everything is in place. Um, so there you have it, our confirmation for this year, starting on the 4th of May. Uh, no, not the 4th of May. Let me just get that date right. Yes, the 4th of May. Good. And then, friends, um, we have our fun family day on the 6th of May, Saturday the 6th of May, and Orion School has been so generous in offering us the school, the premises, to have our fun family day on that Saturday, and so it's going to be a great big event, and we're going to invite the whole of Alberton to come and share with us, but we need you to help us to make the day a success. So there's a list at the back, put down your name, your contact number, so Cheryl can get in touch with you uh, or one of the coordinators of the various activities. Even if you can just come and sit at a table collecting money or give out tickets or whatever the case may be for a few hours on that Saturday, that will be great. Um, it's going to be a big event. It's going to be a great event. But we need everybody's involvement so that we can make it happen. Uh, we're going to use the sports fields. We have use of whatever they have there. Um, and they, they even supply us with people to help us on the day to make sure that everything goes well. Uh, our fun family day. Uh, there's a fun walk. There's a tea garden, game stores, entertainment, sales stores, craft, and all that stuff, photography, and lots and lots more already organized but we need people to help the organizers to make those events happen. So keep that date in mind, the 6th of May. Uh, you're not going anywhere else but Orion Primary School on the 6th of May. If you've planned an overseas trip, well, 
sorry, you need to re reorganize your life. <laughs> okay, friends, and then, uh, you know, we never stop growing as people or as Christians. We never stop growing in our ministry. And to help us to keep on growing, we're offering a pastoral listening course here for our people. And I want to invite all of you to come along. You know, even if you're not in ministry, for your own personal growth, never come to a place in your life where you think you don't need to grow anymore. Don't ever get to that place. It's not good. It's not a good place to be. Come and grow as a person. Uh, come and um, uh, listen. Uh, you know, let's learn to listen uh, more intentionally. Uh, listening for ministry and pastoral conversations. Really want to invite you, even if you're not going to end up in ministry afterwards. Doesn't matter. It's for your own personal spiritual growth. But it's also very helpful in your ministry, especially if you are in ministry, how to uh, grow in your ministry, grow your ministry. And so it starts on the 13th of May. Please speak to Debbie Bailey. There's also a, um, a website that you can visit to register for the course. Uh, the Institute for Creative Conversation has agreed to come and offer the course here. Usually they have it in Benoni and everybody must go there. But they've been so they in generous and they've agreed to come here uh, to, to offer this to us as a church. And so we're very grateful. But we really need our people to participate in that. So keep that in mind. Speak to Debbie as soon as you can or contact the Institute on that website to register or to get information from them and so on and so forth. And then another notice from Pastoral Care. We have people who are willing to go and visit people who can't go out, uh, do hospital visiting and so much, so much more. And so our people are willing. They, they are people in ministry looking for opportunities to do that. So if you know of someone who needs to be visited, either in hospital or at home, especially elderly people, who are longing for companionship, then please let us know so we can go and visit them. It's a very important ministry and we are very grateful for our volunteers who are ready to do just that work. But we, you need to tell us, you need to let us know so we can go out and do that work. And then the WA, the Women's Day Market Fundraiser, on Mother's Day in front of Pick and Pay, if you have any donations, clothing, handbags, jewelry, books, or white elephant, then please bring them to the church and put them there at the back next to the yellow bin. Tim, we won't throw you away with all this stuff. Don't worry about that. <laughs> and then, friends, just to remind you that the coffee shop is open, Maddie's Coffee Shop. In supporting her, you support the church, and so I want to invite you to don't rush home after the service. Get together with some family or friends, have a cup of coffee or tea or cool drink, a toasted sami or some, something else to, to eat uh, before you, you rush home. She's open till 12, half past 12, so there's more than enough time to just go and, and have a chat there with family or friends, meet with one another, and then have something to eat or drink. That is a mouthful. That is just a mouthful. I saw that once on TV. All great preachers do that. <laughs> they, they do something for the effect. Take water or something just to, to break. Have a break. <laughs> the Lord